Hey, eaglers, what are you doing looking at a statue of someone contemplating the future of niche websites? Well, they're contemplating something, possibly that. Hey, Alex here, how are you all? Hope you're well. So, we're only a few weeks away, or less than a few weeks probably, away from 2024. We still can't rehydrate a pizza. I'm a, when it's ready, could you just shove it in my mouth? <laughs> Don't you be a smart ass. I'll break the atrocity channel. Hydrate level four, please. Ooh. Is it ready? Here you go. Oh boy, oh boy, mom. You sure can hydrate a pizza. However, there are a lot of things that we can do. We can create a lot of content with AI. We can create art with AI. We can record on a very small device like this. Technology is progressing at a uh, fantastic rate. So I just wanted to talk about that in relation to obviously niche websites and making money online and websites and all that kind of stuff. A few predictions, if you will, as to what might happen next year. So I think we'll start with the big one, which is of course, Google SGE, which is their AI, um, thing that's going to sit at the top of the search results. A lot of people are thinking this could be the end of, of websites, of content marketing, of, you know, all that kind of stuff, because basically Google's going to try and answer questions without sending you off to a website. However, I don't think it's as bad as you may think. Uh, I was recently watching um, Matt Diggity's uh, predictions for 2024. You know, Matt Diggity, right? He's a big guy in the SEO space. And he made some good points about uh, SGE. In fact, you know, rather than me just say them, let me just give you a clip. SEO won't die. And that's simply because SGE isn't gonna get the adoption level that the SEO doomsday preppers are predicting. And here's my reasons for that in order of increasing importance. First off, it's slow as shit. This is how it works. You search for something, it starts generating the AI result, and about eight seconds later, it shows you the SG section. It's too slow, eight seconds too slow. In most cases, humans don't want an answer from an AI. In February, I'm taking my family on a trip to Hokkaido. I wanna know the top three restaurants there. Do I want that from an AI who doesn't even eat? Hell no, I'm gonna read some foodie blog instead. The next reason that AI won't run rampant is because Google is afraid of the AI messing up. And this next reason is all you need to hear. The one reason to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. Google will never make a move that isn't profitable or at the very least profit neutral. Check out this SGE result. Do you see any ads up here? Nope, they're actually pushing ads down their search result with this bulky SG block. And when ads are lower, they get less clicks, which means Google's customers will pay less for them. So there we have it. That's Matt's thoughts on uh, SGE. And I think probably the most important point that he makes there is that in general, people want information from people, from humans, especially when you're looking for things like the best restaurant or how to do something or, or a product review, all of those kind of things. Do you really want AI to answer that or do you want some real information from people that are, are real and have actually maybe tasted the food or tried the product, that kind of thing. So. I think the fear and hype around SGE is probably over-exaggerated and ultimately we're all gonna be okay. There is a caveat to that, of course. It does mean that uh, websites that just answer simple questions like, uh, you know, can you wash an American flag? May be at risk. And, you know, I am talking about one of my sites when I refer to that, you know, can you wash it is all about just answering questions. And at the moment, you know, it's doing pretty well but yeah, that's the kind of site that is probably gonna be uh, affected by SGE. Of course, I can improve that content, maybe add a little bit of extra value, but with that sort of content and that kind of site, it is more difficult, which kind of leads me on to my next prediction, which is that content and more importantly, high quality human generated content is gonna be in even more demand because as AI kind of scoops up all of those searches for very simple questions like, you know, can you wash stuff or whatever. For other searches, people are going to crave and yearn for real high quality, real human content. And I think probably the best way to deliver that is in a video because AI, though it does do video to a certain degree, it's nothing like a real human uh, video. So my next prediction is that High quality content is going to be very, very important. You can't just be uh, average anymore. And the best way to create that high quality content is with a video. 
So uh, let's move on to some other thoughts that I've got on this. I was watching a, uh, a podcast the other day um, featuring Jackie Chow. It was on uh, Jamwa's podcast, actually. And yeah, he was making some interesting thoughts and predictions as well regarding uh, the future. And one of his key points was uh, in terms of monetization. And I guess this is a knock-on effect um, in terms of, you know, SGE. Informational content is, de- is going to be dead in the next like two years. So if you're relying heavily on display ads and you don't, if you're fully relying on Google traffic, yeah, definitely clapped. Like I would put that at like a 90% certainty. 90% certainty in five years, like your, your revenue is going to be gone. And yeah, basically he was saying that monetization is going to come more from affiliate, still very bullish about affiliate, but also from selling things like digital products, software as a service, that kind of stuff. And it's going to move away from uh, ad revenue. So if you've got a site and you're just making money from Ezoic or uh, any of those other kind of advertising companies, Mediavine, et cetera, you could be in trouble because you're probably going to get less traffic. There's also the double whammy of third party cookies, you know, eventually going away, which is probably going to have a big effect on ad revenue as well. So now's probably the time to start thinking about other possible, uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about, other possible <laughs> monetization, uh, you know, methods, things like affiliate, maybe coming up with your own product or digital service or, or something like that. Okay, the, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is with regards to um, EAT and building EAT because we keep talking about EAT and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Expertise and experience and authority and trust. The key ranking factor everyone likes to make out. Yeah, because Google's going to want to try and figure out who is actually creating good content, who is an expert and who is an authority. And, you know, we've kind of been talking about this a l- for a little while now and coming up with lots of ideas in terms of how to improve EAT. But from what I can see and looking at what other SEO experts are saying, I know I said other SEO experts, like trying to include myself as an SEO expert, which of course I'm not, but yeah, other people online and SEO experts have been saying that EAT ultimately, and probably even more so in the future, is just gonna come down to links. So if you're not link building to your site or if you don't have some kind of link building strategy in place, again, now might be the time to start thinking about that try and find a good partner and um, maybe outsource the process to build up those links. Um, Yeah, of course you need to couple it with your good high quality content. What a lovely uh, morning this is. I don't know if you can see it's a little bit hazy out there on the sea. It's beautiful out here today. So yeah, there's some predictions. Oh, let me get, oh, that's better. There's a few predictions for 2024. 2024, can you believe it? It's literally the future. I say we haven't got the rehydrated pizza. We haven't got the flying cars or the hoverboard either. <laughs> what are your thoughts for uh, for next year? You, you still feeling positive about, you know, publishing online, making money online, all that kind of stuff? Or is it all just doom and gloom for you? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Personally, I'm bullish about next year. I'm kind of refocusing a little bit on what I'm doing. Going to be creating less sites like Can You Wash It? And kind of focusing more on higher quality content which I'm going to be showing some of that stuff to you real soon. Um, Yeah, stay positive, up your content game, and uh, I think you'll find it. I mean, if you can't do that, then I don't know, maybe you're going to have to go get a job at McDonald's or whatever, but I don't think it's that bad. (laughs) I don't think it's that bad. I know you could do it. I know you can find a great niche where you can deliver some fantastic content that a machine just won't be able to do. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next year. I hope you uh, you have a great Christmas and New Year if I don't speak to you before, but I'm sure I will. I'm thinking I might do a stream before Christmas, maybe get some guests on, but we'll see see if I can organise that. So yeah, leave your, your comment below in terms of what you think is going to happen in 2024. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, good luck with your sites. See you later.